To be very honest, this is a fairly simple problem to solve. All you need to do is quickly identify which data structure do you have to use. And also just take care of all of the edge cases as well. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see how you can approach this problem and how by using the stat data structure, you can come up with an efficient solution. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. When you look at the problem statement, it is pretty straightforward. You are given a string and a character. What you need to do is, you need to reverse the segment of the world starting from the beginning and then up to the first occurrence of the character that is given. So what does this mean? For example, over here I have my first test case. This is my particular string, correct? And the character I have to look is D. If you notice, I have two Ds in my input string. You have to find out the first occurrence of this and then for all the characters from beginning up till this particular character, you just have to reverse it. So when you reverse this part, your string starts to look something like this, right? And that's it. This is the string that you have to return and this particular string is your answer. In this problem, you might have some of the edge cases as well. For example, look at the second test case. My string is x, y, x, z, x, e. You can see that there are a lot of x's and the character itself is x. But don't worry, you have to follow what the problem says. You have to find out the first occurrence of x and then starting from the beginning, you just have to reverse the segment. In this particular test case, there is just one character in the beginning, right? So when you reverse it, the string practically remains unchanged, correct? So for this particular test case, this same string will be your answer. Similarly, you can have one more edge case. For example, in my third test case, I have the string ABCD, but the character that is requested is Z. Now, Z does not occur anywhere in the string, so you cannot find it. This does not mean that you will reverse the entire string. In fact, as per this problem statement, you need to leave your string unchanged because there was no V. So for this particular test case, this same string once again will be your answer. So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Once again, I have my sample test case with me. I have this string and the character is D. The first thing that you have to do is find out the first occurrence of this particular character, right? And how can you find this first occurrence? What you can do is you can have a pointer that starts from the beginning and then move this pointer one character at a time until you find the first occurrence of whatever character is asked. This part is mandatory. Think about it. If the character over here was Z, then you will traverse the entire string and not find the character. In that case, you can simply return your original string and that will be your answer. So the first step is to find out the first occurrence of the given character. Now that you have found out that, hey, this is my first occurrence. You know that for this problem, you have to reverse this particular segment of the given string and to reverse a string, what data structure can you use? You can use a stack data structure because in a stack, the last character that is at the top, that will be popped out first because a stack works on the principle of last in first out. So basically what I'm going to do is while I'm traversing the string to find out the first occurrence, keep on adding all of these elements to your stack as well. So first of all, I add an A, then a B, then a C, and then you see a D, right? And that is where you stop. You found out the first occurrence and you stopped as well along with your stack data structure. 
Now, to arrive at the answer, just take up your stack and start popping elements until the stack is empty. So what will you do? You will take out first element, then the second element, then the third element, and then the last element. Once your stack is empty, just resume the operation of your pointer and start to put the characters one by one. So next character you will get is E, then an F, and then a D. You are now at the very end and this particular string is your answer. We only did one iteration of the entire string. So that makes your time complexity to be order of n. And we are taking the help of a stack data structure. So that makes the space complexity also to be order of n. Now, in this problem, you can argue that, hey, I can use some of the library functions, right? String.reverse or string.indexof and all sorts of those functions. But using any of those functions won't affect the time complexity because those functions will run in the same time complexity in which you are actually running the program. So these are all the points that you should keep in mind when you are coming up with such a solution. Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have my sample test case that is passed in as an input parameter to the function reverse prefix. Now, if you remember, what was the first thing that we did? First of all, we found out the first occurrence of the given character, right? Now, the character is D, so I do a word dot index of this particular character. If I get a value, that means this particular character does exist in my string. If not, I will get a minus one. And if that is the case, you don't have to make any modifications and you simply return the word. So this is how basically you are handling the edge case, correct? For the next step, what do you do? You now create a character stack that is gonna store all of the characters up till the first occurrence. Once the stack is ready, we now add all of the characters to our stack until that first occurrence. I get the value of my first occurrence as three, correct? Given a zero based indexing. So in this loop, I will start to add the characters A, B, C, and then a D. The characters got added. And now is the time that you actually start building your result. So for the result, once again, what do you do? You will keep on popping elements from the stack and that will give you D, C, B, and then a A. Once you have popped out all of the characters, you just need to add all the remaining characters that were present in your string. So this is gonna add E, F, and D. After all of this is finished, this is your resultant string and this is then finally returned. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that for this particular problem, yes, you can use a lot of inbuilt functions of most of the coding libraries. But it is always a good idea that you ask your interviewer these questions first. That, hey, can I use this function? Hey, can I use this standard library? If yes, well and good. Otherwise, there is a chance that your interviewer is expecting to see your thought process, how you're coming up with the solution. And most likely this problem is a beginning question. There will be certainly a follow-up question once you're able to do it. So just take your time and talk to your interviewer about all of the approaches that are coming to your mind. While going throughout the video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other such problems which are derived out of this particular problem? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments as well. Stay tuned for my next videos. Until then, see ya.